here in our new Hall 23. Welcome to day two of IFA Berlin. My name is Annabel Mandeng. I am your MC for today. And we are so lucky with the weather. I mean, it's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's perfect for all the walking from hall to hall. So Eva actually is doing wonders for our, for your daily step counts, I guess. So let's get ready for the fourth keynote at this year's IFA. And let me invite to the stage the Senior Vice President for IFA 2022. Please put your hands together for David Ruetz. Hello, David. Very good morning. The good, good mood. Morning. <laughs> Yes, it's good to have you, and um, I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the second day on the IFA. How do you feel? Well, uh, I just heard your intro, uh, <laughs> and I can confirm that uh, one day at IFA uh, saves you at least uh, two visits at the gym. That's why I put my sneakers on today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not so sure about that. Actually, I would need more exercise, but... Um, even after a day of roaming the halls, of pounding the halls of the Messe Berlin. But David, I mean, this is the first IFA in three years, yes. right? It's been, it's been a long time for all of us. So after day one, what is, what is your take? Do you think that we are back on track now? Yes, definitely, definitely. We've had an incredibly busy and interesting first day yesterday with three keynotes from Qualcomm on intelligent connectivity, from Archelic on the both difficult and promising relationship between technology and sustainability, and from Honor about seamlessly working across devices. And then, of course, there's all the technology our exhibitors have on display here on the fairgrounds. I've seen so many inspiring products. I, I find it amazing. And my Christmas wish list got quite a bit longer already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, but um, if I ask you, there's, there's one thing that is even more important, right? So all the halls that you visited yesterday, they were very, very busy. There were many trade visitors, there were large numbers of consumers and lots of journalists. I mean, that's what I actually realized as well. So there were so many people. And today, it seems to be even busier. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a Saturday, as you know, so we're bound to have more visitors, more consumers especially, and to be honest, I think the consumers uh, are our, our special sauce at, here at IFA, if I may put it so. The tech experts, they love the gadgets. They, they, they love new technology, and when it comes to new technology, there's nothing that beats uh, um, a good old reality check. Do consumers actually like it? Do normal people get it how it works? And most importantly, do they really get excited? Do they say, I definitely want to buy this? So for retailers and brands alike, this makes IFA a crucial event. And because our show happens just ahead of the year's most important retail season, Singles Day, Black Friday, uh, Christmas, Chinese uh, New Year, not to forget. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Now, I think um, it's time to introduce actually our next keynote speaker. His name is William Tian, the president of Huawei, Consumer Business Group in Western Europe. Huawei certainly are no strangers to IFA, David, right? Indeed, Annabelle. Uh, Huawei has been on our keynote stage three times uh, before, in 2017, 18, and 19. And like every technology company in the world, Huawei is facing challenges following the pandemic. But as Huawei's presence shows, the company's commitment to innovation and technology leadership is burning as bright as ever. And we have been promised to get a good look at the company's latest products as well. Super. Thank you, David. There's just one more thing to add from me. William Tian will be joined on stage by Ben Wood, the chief analyst at CCS Inside. So enjoy the keynote. Enjoy your second day at IFA.
Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. What a great crowd. It's uh, really exciting to see so many people here. The sun's shining outside, but uh, you can get back to that later. We've got an important 40 minutes or so to share some updates from Huawei. My name is Ben Wood, as you heard. I'm an independent analyst from CCS Insight, a, an international research firm. And uh, I'm really delighted to be here today to put some questions uh, to William about Huawei's business, and we're going to share some new um, products with you. So, William, thank you so much uh, for joining me, and welcome. Uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you also, everyone, for coming. And uh, this morning, uh, we've got some very exciting new things to show you. Brilliant. Well, um, I'm going to start with quite a, a, a kind of toughish question, which is, um, I think the elephant in the room and the, the thing that everybody's been talking about is, you know, Huawei's had a really tough time over the last few years. So it's not just the pandemic, which we heard about in the opening address, um, but also the wider challenges you've, you've faced as a company. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you've worked through that and uh, you know, how, how tough things have been and where you are now. So past few years has been incredibly hard for everyone. It's the first IFA since 2019. Can I just say it's so wonderful to be here back at IFA celebrating all the wonderful things our industry put for us. Yes, Huawei has been facing a lot of challenges for the past few years since we met uh, three years ago here. Uh, but we are still going, we are still innovating, we are still bringing many new technologies and products to millions of loyal customers in European country. So, I mean, I'd expect you to say that, William. You're, you're representing the company. Um, but it, it feels maybe a little bit like you've retreated back to China. Is that where Huawei is now, or are you still very committed to, to, to Europe? Yes, we are committed to European Union. We are still invest. We are still uh, marketing and selling our products. We work with all the partners. So, yes, you look at the numbers, you know, so we are not, we haven't given up. You know, it has been just announced. Huawei is the uh, ninth largest brand around the world with brand value of more than 70 billion US dollars, which means almost 30% year-year growth. So, and uh, you know, there is no other company, just one other company in this world invest more R&D money than Huawei. This result, as a result, Huawei have applied much more patents than any other companies in this world. You know, so you can see the, see the number here. So that looks like a big, investment. I think we've got some big companies up on the screen here, you know, Microsoft, Samsung, others, you're ahead of them. If you've been investing all um, this money, perhaps you could tell us a, a, a bit about some of the innovations. And I probably, you know, devices is probably the logical place to start. So uh, there are three areas I want to focus, you know, in, a, in terms of innovation. The first actually is the hardware. You know, the uh, early this year, we just launched P50 Pocket, you know, this uh, foldable phone, this format, it's, uh, you know, it's has consistent Huawei design language, elegant, you know, the double ring, um, double ring camera, and if you flip up, it's, you know, a big screen, and also if you clamp shut, it's seamlessly together. So, very so, nice. So yeah. this is this is uh, uh, your this is already in the market. Yes, you're already selling this. Yes, you have this this design. Are you doing other stuff with foldables as well? I think you have uh, you know, yeah. quite a, a large. We, we just uh, launched this latest, you know, uh, foldable phone, Huawei Mate XS2. Um, it has been well received because it solved, you know, the three major pain points of a foldable phone. Number one is when it open up. It's super flat, you know, you cannot see anything. And also, it's uh, super light, you know, it's very light, it's not bulky uh, and heavy. And also, the third thing is, it's very durable. If I drop Don't do here, that. <laughs> and it's, 
it will not be broken. So it's very durable. Why we can do this? Because we, uh, you know, put a lot of uh, resources and research to innovate, continue to innovate this hinge and a screen. Then we can have this super flat, light and durable screen and uh, foldable experience. And do you, have other, do you have other foldables as well? Is that you've just these two, or is there another yeah. design? Yeah, this is the, like uh, the one screen, you know, the um, outside in, right? So we also have another uh, phone, pocket, uh, phone factor of the foldable phone. You see we have the three phone factor of the foldable, yeah? And is this going well for you? Are you is, I mean, presumably China's a key market for these products. Definitely. In China, we are absolutely number one uh, in affordable uh, segment. We are, also, we are the uh, leading pioneer in affordable technology. In China, okay, that's, that's interesting. Now, everyone knows about your, your brand and, and phones, but I know over the last few years you've been investing in a number of different areas as well, and I think you, you have some other yes, devices uh, that you want to talk about as well. Yes, we, uh, you know, two months ago in Berlin, we just announced our two six-inch laptop. Uh, these two six-inch uh, laptop has a big screen and also with powerful performance. This big screen and powerful performance perfectly match with the needs of uh, you know, hybrid, this new normal from the post-pandemic. So you can you spend more time working at home, you need this big screen, you know, you can sacrifice a little bit, you know, the, 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 the the light, uh, lightness. So, and, al and also we introduced uh, uh, Huawei GT3 Pro in Milan, like three months ago. And that's a watch, a smart yeah, watch? Yeah, a smart watch, you okay. see. It's a very you know, elegant design. It's the combination of technology, sports, and fashion. It's a luxury premium, like ceramic, uh, titanium. You know, it's kind of a, a luxury timepiece and also with a wonderful software. So that's a good look at your hardware, and we're going to talk more about hardware later in our discussion. Yeah. Um, in terms of other innovations where you're investing this R&D, I guess um, you know, there's been some, something else that you've been working yeah. on, this, this super device concept. The second area is uh, software. You know, Huawei has been investing a lot of money in developing software you know, to make people's life rich and uh, easier. So one of the great examples actually is uh, Super device. Super device is a, uh, you know, a system, you know, can, uh, framework, you know, to allow our Huawei smartphone users, laptop users, tablet, and watch can collaborate seamlessly together. Not just the, you know, easily paired, connected, but also you can share your video, your file, uh, your um, documents seamlessly, yeah? So, so you're saying it's more than just kind of pairing up and sharing stuff, it almost becomes multiple devices become one kind of machine together. For the user, it becomes very seamless to transfer between laptop, phone, watch, printer, tablet, whatever. Yes, there are two fundamental technologies behind this. Number one is Huawei unique uh, virtual distributed bus. So. With this virtual distributed bus, you know, all the uh, hardware like camera, screen, you know, among all these devices can work together, right. yeah, seamlessly and uh, uh, synchronized. The second is, uh, you know, Huawei is really good at the wireless technology. So, li so this super device also uh, use uh, many short-term, uh, uh, near-distance wireless connection technology. So, the least virtual distributed bus plus Huawei uh, near distance wireless technology together to make this super device uh, you know, possible. And I guess your, your wireless expertise comes from the phones and networks and it's a real kind of big area where Huawei has a lot of you know, intellectual property and, and other things, right? Yes. Okay. So. Software we've talked about, hardware we've talked about. I know something you're very passionate about is photography, and that is one story which has been very consistent 
with Huawei over the years. So maybe you could talk us through the journey that you've had on um, photography at Huawei. Yeah, Huawei smartphone is well known as the best camera phone in the world, right? You know, uh, early years we developed uh, durable, cam durable camera phone. We made this durable camera, you know, to the mass market. You know, all the industry players followed the suit, actually. You know, then the dual, dual, dual camera, triple camera. And then we have, uh, like, portrait mode. Huawei made this portrait mode perfect, you know, for, for people, right? And also, Huawei phone is also well known to take perfect picture in a low light situation. The night mode, super night, night mode. And also, we further develop, develop our, um, you know, the AI technology and uh, the sensor technology. We put this AI technology and the sensor technology together to create a like, computing image to make, you know, the push the envelope of the mo mobile photography. For example, P30 Pro, everyone knows, our P30 Pro can take the, the moon, yeah? That was one of yeah. well, the you know, heyday of Huawei, the yeah. P30 Pro was a, a device I, I really uh, liked. And you're not standing still, right? So you've got more innovations coming. Um, and perhaps that leads us nicely onto one of the products that you've announced here at, at IFA. Um, I think you're still continuing to focus very heavily on uh, photography. So maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Yes. So today, I'm bringing this uh, Huawei Nova 10 Pro and Huawei Nova 10. So these two products. So you see, before we're talking about photography, you see this uh, very consistent uh, design language and also this very iconic Huawei, you know, the ring design. And also this is a, a, a super thing, you know, if you, but the really, Really important thing is about our camera. As you said, you know, I can say this is the world best front camera phone. Best front camera phone. So what's special about the front yeah, camera? This front camera has, a, has a two cameras, one camera with 60 megapixel uh, ultra-wide autofocus camera. So let me just, did you say 60 megapixel? Because that's more, I think the one on the back small, that's a smaller sensor. So why have you put such a big sensor in the front of the phone? Because this allows you to take you know, the selfie, goofy, and do, if you do the live streaming, you do the vlog, it will give you the best you know, shot. Yeah? So, you're, so maybe this is kind of catering to some of the more modern use cases on, on smartphones. A lot more people using the front-facing camera, as you say, kind of social media, TikTok. Vloggers, is that the market you're going after with this product? Yes, Huawei always listening to our dear customers, their needs. And also this, uh, you know, uh, there is another camera, it's a close-up camera. Right. Can give you, this close-up can give you, uh, you know, the, uh, like, uh, give you the very details about your beautiful face and eyes. Right? <laughs> okay. okay. That's very good. Uh, so, um, I think you said there were two, two products, right? So there's the Nova, 10 Pro, this device, you have the Nova 10 as well. Can you tell us a bit about the differences between those two devices? Yeah, the Nova 10 Pro uh, actually has a 100 watt supercharge. This 100 watt supercharge allows you to fully charge your uh, phone in only 20 minutes. Okay, so, so from zero to 100, 20 minutes. So, that, so for this kind of user who's on their phones all the time, you're providing a kind of facility that means they're back online immediately if their battery's low. Yes. So we also have a Nova 10. Nova 10 is uh, compensated with a much thinner, you know, the, the, uh, much lighter, you know, for, so it's only, it's less than seven uh, millimeter. Right. It's one of the thinnest phone in the world. Wow, okay, so, so two lovely products. Um, Great hardware, nice camera, it sounds like you've really invested there. Um, I guess another one of my questions when it comes to Huawei devices is, you know, there's been a lot of questions about apps. So um, you know, you've had to build your own app ecosystem. Can you give us maybe a bit of an update on how you're getting on with that challenge and what progress you've made um, over the last few years on, on apps? Yes, we have been investing a lot of resources, money, you know, the team, to develop uh, Huawei 
HMS, Huawei Mobile Services ecosystem. You know, first, you know, we have this uh, app gallery, uh, Panto Search, uh, Panto Maps, and uh, Huawei Browser, Huawei Cloud, all these basic services for our uh, users. We have developing it very fast. It's uh, especially one thing I want to mention here is Huawei, uh, you know, Panto Maps. Huawei Panto Maps has the best navigation experience. You can try it, yeah? The secondly, you know, uh, we have been working with millions of uh, uh, content providers across the world to bring their apps on board our app gallery. Right now, you can access almost every uh, apps you want in your phone from app gallery. And if you can't get the apps you want, what are the options for users if they, they can't find anything in the app gallery? Do you, I, I think you said Petal Search is a way of... Yeah, in, in few occasions, if you cannot find one particular app, you can also go to our, use our Pento Search to uh, source, to search, you know, the apps. Uh, Pento Match can give you more than millions of, uh, you know, apps. It will give our users much more, uh, more freedom to choose, yeah? So we're there, I mean, we're here in Germany. Um, I, I know you're building apps for all over the world, but are there, are there any highlights for the German market that you're excited about that you've added to the app Yes, gallery? one example is, uh, you know, recently we get at least Omeo, a German apps on board, well, which provide, you know, the, uh, the flights and the train tickets. You know, it's very popular here. So I'm very happy to say, you know, it's onboarded, our app gallery. And I think you've got another big announcement here as well. So um, you know, I think uh, we're going to talk about fitness in a moment, but I think you've got a, a new partnership you're, you've revealed at IFA that maybe you could tell everybody about. Yes, we are expanding our apps and app gallery you know, to the wearable category. So it's just been announced, you know, Strava will be uh, integrated with Huawei wearable, which means Huawei wearable users can uh, you exchange Strava data between Strava and Huawei uh, wearable. Okay, well, that, that, I mean, that's really, I, I'm not a runner myself, yeah. but my friends who are runners, I know they all talk to, talk to me about Strava all the time, so I'm sure that's a um, good news um, for you guys. Let's, let's change gear. Let's talk about some other things. So, um, yeah, we've had the pandemic. We've had to start thinking about how... Um, people have different user scenarios in their lives. And uh, I think you wanted to tell everybody a bit about um, Huawei's smart office. Yeah, Huawei, we define, you know, five uh, full scenarios, like a smart home, uh, entertainment, easy travel, uh, smart office, and, uh, you know, one of the actually uh, very important areas is smart office. We have been diversified our portfolio over the past few years, you know, to uh, smart office devices like laptop, tablet, and monitor, and uh, like printers. Yeah, so uh, we have, we can transfer some really um, unique expertise and know-how from smartphone to uh, smart devices offices. One of the examples actually is the industry design. You know, we, right. you know, we use these uh, devices for work, but it doesn't, does not mean, you know, this, Devices can look, you know, ugly or, you know, not elegant, so, yeah. And uh, what sort of feedback have you had on that? Because this is, a, you know, I guess you're taking, what you're saying is you're taking your industrial design kind of expertise in your mobile devices and bringing them to, I mean, things like monitors, that's amazing you're in that yeah. space. So, um, are you getting good feedback? Definitely, yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, maybe we move then on to um, another new product. And I think we talked about um, laptops earlier. But right, you, you, you've unveiled um, this new product, I believe, at the show that yeah. people can see on the booth. This is uh, the latest, uh, you know, we are announced here uh, in IFA, Huawei MateBook X Pro. Okay. Yeah? This so what's, is the, uh, what's unique about this? Wait, tell me a bit about the design that you've, 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 you've done here. You look at the, you know, the, the, blue, the ink blue, very elegant. Right. And then look at the casing, the surface, you know, you, you can touch it. Okay, oh, yeah. thank you. So, so what is, what's this finish you've got on here? This feels quite a you know, different, um, kind of got a soft finish. What have yeah, you done yeah. with that? So I think this is, you feel like a, like a baby face. It's really, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, and also the, 
the production process and the way of making it is very environmental, you know, friendly. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, uh, open up, you know. Okay, so what have we got? A pretty big screen here. Yeah, it's very, uh, the big screen. And what is this, Windows yeah. and Intel? And what, what do you, it's kind of pretty standard specs on that? Yes, yes, okay. but look at the, uh, the, the screen first, you know. Okay. And it's a 3K display. Right. Huawei full view, you know, display. And also with very tiny bezel, you know, give you the, the, the full view. And also, uh, let's look at, uh, you know, the, the one of the most interesting thing about this uh, Mate X Pro actually is touchpad. Right. I, I said, you know, Huawei transferred a lot of uh, expertise know-how from smartphone to the uh, smart devices. This is one of them, you know, the touch, touchpad. I, one of the most favorite features of Huawei smartphone is you know, use this knuckle knock to do the screenshot. So you can do this. So yeah? you, I think we can see on the video, yeah? you, 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 tap the, yeah. you tap the pad and it then yeah. does a screen grab. Yes. Yes. Any other innovations in the in the in the keypad that, or the, in the touchpad? Also, pad? this uh, you know uh, touchpad, you can you, you you can try, you can see what right. happened. Yeah. So you've got the the knock that you talked yeah. about, and then um, I guess I think you mentioned there's some sort of haptic yeah. feedback here. So okay, yeah. So I can adjust the I can adjust the volume, and I get a a, a, a kind of haptic feedback yeah. here. So these are technologies that you've pioneered on mobile, and then yeah. you brought more to this, 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 this category. Yeah, so we, while we bring you know, a lot of innovations you know, to these uh, uh, smart office devices like laptop. Okay, so again, more focus on hardware. You've done a lot on that. What are you, what are you doing in terms of the user experience? Because I guess we are using laptops in different ways. Now I spend a lot of time doing video calls and those sorts of things. Have you been innovating there yeah. as well. I believe you've got this yeah. new smart conference. We have this smart conference because right now, the post-pandemic area, you know, everyone is expected to do video conference you know, anytime, anywhere. So we have this uh, smart conference. Uh, there are two functions. One is AR camera. This AR camera, you know, can track your face and your body, uh, your, your face, and always put your face in the middle of the screen then your colleagues from the other side can see you very clearly. Even when you move a little bit, do, you, you, you do the movement during a conference. And another thing is, you know, occasionally we have a video conference or conference, you know, in a noisy uh, situation. So then we, you turn, turn on this AI sound, then do the noise cancelling. So then allow your colleagues can hear you very clearly. Okay, all these uh, so we put it together, as smart conference. This is very well received for, for uh, right now, for this post-pandemic, uh, you know. Okay, well, that, that, uh, so we, we, we've got some features here. So you're saying the, the, the video follows you, there's some sound. I think we've got a video we can show which will help everybody actually understand how this works. Yes. We mentioned before that the marketing plan in this year is to attract younger customers. You're right. Our marketing strategy will consider the adjustment. How do you think? Online marketing will be the focus of this year, especially in the other six markets. Yes, such a good Yeah, sure. Why not? Great, looks like fun, I'll have to try that. Um, so, what else have you got? I think you've got some new tablets here, right? Can we talk about those? Can you tell us a bit about what, uh, what products you're, you're launching here at IFA? Yeah, today we also bring this, uh, you know, Huawei uh, MatePad Pro with two versions. One is 12.6 uh, inch, the other is uh, uh, 11 inch. So, see here, with a wonderful 
uh, you know, screen. This is an OLED uh, full view screen, and also have has a, a 120 fr uh, hertz uh, flash rate, which enable uh, users to you know watch video and play games. You know, very uh, 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 interesting, and uh, also. Uh, we, we have this, you know, the stylus, the input. So if, you, if we look at the backside, it's also Huawei, you know, consistent design language with this ring design of camera. Oh, okay, there we go. So I can see the, the consistency there. So, so this is a common design theme across your devices, is it? Yes. Okay, and what, what, looking at the tablet, can I just have a quick look? So this is, what, what's this? It looks like this is using your Harmony platform. So is this, I know you've been using that before, is, is there anything new about this device? Yeah, so the latest Harmony OS 3.0 version applies for uh, MatePad Pro, uh, the latest MatePad Pro. So Harmony OS um, 3.0 brings a lot of new features. One of the interesting features actually is uh, this, uh, you know, the wedge group. You can put like a similar uh, apps for same you know situation together and you can freely group it and uh, organize it and also we have these car holders you see you know the very oh uh, right okay yeah, so uh, that's another yeah. new feature you yeah and also we have a multi windows you know to when you do the video conference you also can use other apps you know the these multi windows allow you to do the uh, multi tasks so you can have more than one yes. kind of app on it all right so we've looked at some hardware New laptop, new phone, new tablet. Another macro topic that I've noticed here at IFA has been very much around health and fitness. And I think that's an area where you've been working hard. I think we can see some of your ambassadors here. Mo Farrow, who obviously I know very well, um, a, a very amazing athlete. Um, can you tell us a bit about what you're doing in this space? Because we talked about the watch earlier, but I think this is another big focus area for you and your team. Yes, uh, fitness and health is one of Huawei's most focused uh, categories right now. We have been uh, putting a lot of resources you know, in this area. So this has led us to global number two uh, you know, sales of the wearable, uh, which means you know, more than 100 million uh, units of shipment last year. And we have more than 350 uh, million uh, active users of Huawei Health, you know, and uh, why we can, you know, achieve such uh, success, you know, for the past few years, because, you know, we, as I said, we put a lot of R&D uh, in it. One example is, you know, more than uh, 80 uh, research institutes globally now working with Huawei to develop this personal technology. Another example is Huawei last year, we built a 5,000 square meter, the health and fitness lab in our headquarters to develop this, uh, to pioneer this latest technology, hardware, software, you know, to uh, come up with the best uh, wearables. So I think we've got some of your latest devices on the, on the screen now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've got here? Because there seems to be quite a, a mix of, so uh, mix these, of devices. These, uh, these watches uh, actually were launched this year, like Runner for Professional, which uh, you know, help even the world's best athletes to improve their performance, the Runner. And also right. uh, we introduced our Watch GT3 Pro, yeah, and also the light version of a sports watch, you know, the Fit2 for, for everyone. And uh, uh, on top of that, actually, the Huawei Health, as I said, we already have more than 350 million users globally, you know, use our Huawei Health. And right. then uh, in, in May, in Milan, we introduced the Huawei Health Plus. Huawei Health Plus to pr actually provide premium content, you know, for more workouts and to guide your exercise and also the, to, to provide our users' nutrition uh, advice to help you stay fit, and f fit, right? And also some programs to help you uh, maintain your mental health, yeah? 
Okay, so we talked earlier, I remember we talked a lot about the, um, the camera evolution. And I think on the, on, on the wearables, you have a platform called True Scene, which is your evolution here. And this journey has been quite an interesting one. So your devices? Yeah, uh, True Scene is one of the fundamental technology you know, for our you know, wearable uh, category. So True Scene actually have the, you know, the sensor, AI, uh, you know, all these things together to improve the uh, accuracy of, uh, you know, the heart rate tracking, you know, to measure your body temperature, SpO2, yeah? So we have developing this for past several years to make it more and more advanced, to, to measure your heart rate more and more accurately, you know, and recently, you know, will bring also the uh, blood pressure. Okay. Okay, and I, I think you talked before about working with all these institutes, so you've clearly got an eye on, on, on the future. Um, can you tell us, maybe give us a sneak peek into the areas that you're looking at for future kind of sensing and analysis on, on, on your devices? Yes, you know, um, as I said, we work with more than 80 global research you know, institutes, and also we have a big uh, lab back in HQ. What, what are they doing right now? They are doing like they are exploring new frontiers in this health and fitness area. For example, what, you know, maybe we can come up with an innovative um, way to measure uh, your blood, uh, your, your sugar level, blood sugar level, you know, by wearing our uh, devices. Right. And also the long function, you know, high. Uh, Altitude, you know the, the the situation, you know. So all these uh, new frontiers, where you know you can expect, there are some uh, new devices, you know. So this is coming. maybe yeah. a bit of a sneak peek into yeah. the areas of research yeah. that you're, yes. you're you're focusing. Now you mentioned blood pressure, and I think one of the most interesting devices when I was on your booth uh, yesterday was the the Watch D. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit about that because I think that's got a real focus on heart health and blood pressure and other things. So can you, can you give everybody a bit of an overview on that product? Yes, so I'm very proud to bring this uh, new uh, like Watch D. Uh, first, this Watch D, Huawei Watch D, is a classic sports watch. You know, it can measure your steps. You know, it has more than 70 workouts for you. And, uh, uh, you know, so it uh, has all the functions the typical sports watch has. Right. But on top of that, you know, we, this watch can measure your blood pressure accurately and easily. But that, usually I have to go to the doctors for that and have the thing on my arm and it yeah. squeezes it. How, how are you doing that on this device? So you see, here is the, you know, we have this uh, uh, mini pump and uh, mini airbag to make it happen also together with the sensor, also uh, the AI uh, algorithm. All these things, you know, together, you know, they can, this watch can measure your blood pressure very accurately. So, so, yeah. it, so the, the, this is actually inflates. Yes. You, know, you put it on your wrist and it yeah. inflates up and it takes blood pressure. So that, I guess that makes it a kind of medical device. So how can you prove that it's actually doing it accurately? Right now, actually, I'm wearing one, you know. Uh, for my age, I need to really start to pay attention <laughs> to all these uh, important, you know, health index, right? The blood pressure is one of them. So I wear this, you know, if I, I wear this, and uh, put it like this, and just maybe uh, less than half a minute, 20 seconds, you can have your very accurate blood pressure data. And is that certified? Do, have you had to get any compliance for that? Or yeah. I know selling these kind of devices, you have to get certain Yeah, uh, we, we've permission. just uh, got the CE for uh, medical device. In here in Europe? Yeah, here in Europe. So okay. this means we can we can, you know, um, distribute, you know, we, the, the, the users can uh, have it in European market, in select market very soon. And um, 
this seems like it's your most advanced health product to date. Do, does it do any other heart health functions? Is there, is there anything else you've built into it? Also, actually, you know, the, like uh, three months ago when we were in Milan, we announced, you know, we are going to have an ECG. Yes, right now. The ECG also, we right now, Huawei Watch D and Huawei Watch GT3 right now is equipped with ECG analysis function. So it's also got a proof uh, of uh, CE for medical device, you know, the, the, the ECG uh, function. Okay. So now I'm thinking you're getting a lot of data about me. Yeah. And I know when I talk to people about Huawei, data has been a very controversial topic. So where is all this data being stored? Because um, that, that's something that we probably need to understand if we're going to use your products. So our, all the Huawei users' data, no matter it's smartphone, you know, tablet, watch, Huawei Health, all the data are kept strictly in European Union, in wow. Europe. Uh, the data is stored in European. And it stays, it's not going back to it China, it's definitely going to stay here, compliant, all those things? No. You know, because Huawei, we have the very firm commitment to protect our users' data and privacy. Huawei has been investing a lot of resources in uh, across the world, especially in uh, European Union, you know, to European market, to comply with uh, GDPR regulation. I don't think there is any other companies in this world pay more attention, put more in resources in this uh, area than Huawei. Well, I, I think people yeah. take it very seriously, but yeah. it's good to know yeah. you're doing yeah. it, doing, doing that. And what, I mean, I think I, I saw on the screen that uh, when we were looking at the slides earlier that you've um, been putting products out for testing and uh, Computer Built had one of your products. What were they testing and, and, and what were the results? Yeah, actually, you know, one of the tech medias in Germany here, you know, the Computer Built, tested uh, several uh, sport, the apps, the health and the sports apps, um, uh, finally, the good news is Huawei Health app actually ranked number one. It's the first place in, in terms of uh, personal data and privacy protection. So I'm very proud of you know, you know, our, our efforts and our is recognized. Well, that, congratulations on that. And I, I, I'm super interested in all this health stuff you're doing. Yeah. So we've, we've been on a little journey here. Yeah. You've uh, obviously talked about some of the products you already had in the marketplace. You've talked about how smartphones have influenced some of your design in new product categories. Um, perhaps now, in terms of these new products, it's a good time to uh, let people know when they can get them and how much they're going to uh, cost. So can you talk us through the new devices and what they're going to cost? Yeah, uh, the, uh, you know, all the dear you know, friends, you can see here, you know, Huawei MateBook X Pro, the, the, the latest flagship of Huawei uh, laptop. It uh, priced at uh, 2000 199 euros, and also our Mate 10, uh, no, sorry, uh, Nova 10, uh, priced at 549, and our Nova 10 Pro is uh, 699. Okay, and also uh, Huawei MatePad Pro 11 inch is uh, 649 euros, and our uh, Watch D uh, only at 399. So all these products will be available in select market here in Europe. So that's new products. Thank you for that. Everyone can obviously go see those on the, on the booth as well later. Um, there's also a lot of people who've still got Huawei phones in particular, some of the watches or whatever. I think you've got some news for um, anyone in, in, well, in many of the selected markets in Europe in terms of how you're going to help those existing um, users. So what are you doing there? So Huawei is always you know, taking good care of our uh, Huawei users. You know? so, so we have this uh, Huawei Extra Care program. With this program, you know, the users of Huawei smartphone, if you, your battery is running old, you can go to our service center, you call them, email them, and say, OK, you know, you, then you can have a new battery with less 25 euros, you can have a new battery. You make your uh, smartphone, you know, run longer, okay? And also, for the, if you have a Huawei uh, smartphone, uh, Huawei uh, tablet, and also Huawei watch, 
if the screen is broken, you also can uh, get a new screen replaced uh, with a big discount. Okay, so I think that's a 20% discount yeah. on, a, on, on, a, on a screen replacement. Okay, well, that's great news for the Huawei users that are still out there in the market, and uh, they can go and get their battery refreshed if they want or get the screen replaced with a discount. Um, I think that's probably, we've probably covered everything we wanted to cover. So probably the best thing now is just to invite everybody who's here, if you want to go to the Huawei booth, touch these products, see these products, learn more about it, feel free to get yourselves down to Hall 6.2a. And uh, yeah, with that, William, I'd just really like to thank you for sharing your time with us today. And thank you, everybody, for coming along. And please do enjoy IFA on this lovely sunny weekend. Thank you for coming. Thank you.